Hello and welcome to the SDC Fit Learning Podcast. I'll be your host today. My name's Ben Scott. I'll be joined by Jason Galea. Thanks for joining us on our way to create 1 million positive outcomes for personal training clients by 2030. The podcast is brought to you by at STC Fit Learning, a page created to upskill and educate PTs and gym nerds. Also brought to you by at STC Fit, and that's a place for all your online and in-person personal training needs. If you enjoyed today's episodes, please give us a share and tag on the Instagrams. You can tag at STC Fit, at STC Fit Learning, at Ben Scott SC, and at Jason Galea PC. Hope you enjoy the show. Things are minting for less than 0.5 and they're turning into three, four, five investments yeah. straight away. Yeah, I need to get back. I, I just pulled myself out for a bit. Yeah, you I have need to. to kind of come back in and just yeah. have a play. But yeah, yeah, I got real deep at one stage. I was like, I have a job that I need to take care of. <laughs> and as much as this is like fucking being a child and playing with fucking Tarzos and shit, it's yeah. like, I need to go back to my yeah. job. <laughs> that's why it's so good, but like, it's actually fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the biggest thing for me. It's like that enjoyment factor and you can make money off doing something that you yeah. enjoy doing. I yeah. think that's the biggest thing that I guess has drawn me in and has kept me in. Yeah. 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 Definitely. We, we're rolling. We're in. All right. That was the intro. Beautiful. Sweet. All yeah. right. Uh, STC Fit Learning Podcast. Welcome, everybody. What's up, guys? Special episode, which means we have three weeks in a row, not a pause, yeah. which is fun. Um, because we didn't want to sit on this one for too long because it's everything's moving so goddamn quick at the moment. So we're going to dive in today about crypto and NFTs, which I've been speaking a little bit. If you guys watch the uh, This Week in Business videos on YouTube, Speaking about uh, Adam, who's our special guest today and what he's been doing in the space and what's coming. So our goal really is, well, to ask the right questions uh, for Adam to teach us a little bit about what's going on in the NFT world, what they are, and then with the outcome of how it's actually going to affect fitness in the long run uh, is why we've jumped in early. So Obviously, with, without it being financial advice here, guys, yeah. of course, let's like lay the disclaimer. Yeah, we'll probably should, say that, don't we? Yeah, yeah we, we probably should have everything that. Everything on, online in social media, it's like NFA. Like now we have to be like, hey, this is not financial advice here, guys. Yes, we yeah. are just having a conversation about Yeah, NFT. you are listening to three personal trainers have a discussion about finance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Everyone's just turned off. Yeah, that's it. We're out. Uh, so... I think what maybe before we jump in, like just the rundown of your fitness career, Adam, before now, like before you became um, the NFT king that we know you as. <laughs> big Twitter influencer. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. The Solana Network. The Absolutely big record. crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so I've been in the fitness industry for just, just under seven years. I got into training about a decade ago, just throwing around weights, was skinny boy, wanted to grow a bit of muscle, um, look a little bit better and um, attract girls essentially. Um, and as you do as when, you're, all did, when you're a skinny boy. <laughs> Not my head here <laughs> yeah. with confidence right now. Um, yeah. So I eventually, I went through a few courses, didn't like them and studied fitness. Within two weeks, I knew it was for me. Um, I got my first job at Good Life in February 2015. And um, I started there. I was there for two years initially. I left on my own accord, which is a massive thing within the Good Life sphere. I moved to London just to experience life a little bit, came back and just picked up my career. Um, so yeah, I've been in and out of the good life system for almost seven years. Uh, I am the, I guess, the head coach director of Omega Barbell. We've just expanded. So I brought my brother on board as, a, I guess, a partner, let's say, awesome. um, which is cool. And we'll be expanding our team over the next 12 months, providing everything goes to plan. And um, I guess with, with myself, with lifting, I'm a, a national level powerlifter. I've been competitive powerlifting for two and a half years now. Um, and yeah, it's essentially me in a nutshell when it comes to, comes to fitness. I've managed to, you know, develop a pretty, pretty respected brand on a local level. I feel like this year, particularly I've managed to gain some pretty good traction online, particularly with Instagram. Mm. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm doing pretty well in terms of where I am with my, with my, uh, job and the career. Yeah. It's been a really cool evolution. I think, uh, we've probably known of each other at least four or five years now since I, you got think, back really i think even before then man, i think you would have well we would have got in touch with each other while i was in the uk yeah right yeah um and just yeah to see the evolution of your business when you came back obviously started a little bit slow and then like took off and ran with it to now have staff is is really really cool and obviously we've seen you come through the standout pt program um and applying all of that 
which it's interesting. We're going to talk about like your NFT project later. I've seen a few little bits and pieces in there that are like, I've seen that somewhere before. Yeah. yeah. It's really, really cool to see. We love it. So yeah, it's awesome, man. Um, that progression I think is, is the main thing. I guess like before we go into the, to the crypto world, like what was it? Um, and I hope you don't mind me kind yeah, of saying of this is like when you did come back, I feel like you was a little bit slow to kind of get the business happening and going. What was the trigger point to like do something and, and turn the tide for you? Um, I think it was just clearing the emotional baggage that and the physical baggage that I returned to Melbourne with from London. Um, I lost a lot of weight over there through stress. Um, I came back with a bit of anxiety and stuff as well. And I was really eager to get back to work because I love being in the fitness industry and I was just working dead end bullshit jobs in, in the UK just to get by. And I was completely over it. And I think I just... I jumped into work too soon. I wanted to I wanted to get back into the industry, but I don't think I was ready for it. So okay. I got into quite a bit of debt very, very quickly. Um, and I had to essentially just see a psychologist to, you know, get out of my own head and sort myself out. And once I sort of got through that, um, and I sort of, I think I had a chat to you, Ben, in the DMs, and I was just sort of like trying to paint the picture of the, the gym that... I had left wasn't the gym that I'd returned to. It was the same facility, but it wasn't the same community. It wasn't the same trainer culture, atmosphere and stuff like that. Um, and I felt like from what I left with and what I returned to that I deserved more. Um, and it was the, the chat that we had and what you put me on to, which is sort of like with the growth mindset, fixed mindset stuff that we've learned in the SOPT course, um, the ownership of like, yeah, like things are shit at the moment. You know, the trainer culture isn't that good. The, the MCs are giving leads to people that, you know, they probably shouldn't be spoon feeding their careers, but like, what can you do to get around it? Because that's just the way that things are. Yeah. And I think that from that conversation, and that's like, it's going back over two years now, two and a half years. Um, I always reflect on that as like, that's the, the turning point for me to like take control of my shit. Yeah. And from there, it's just, I started putting in a little bit more effort, started controlling what I could control. Um, and things just started to snowball from there. I started to get a little bit better. I started to, you know, upskill, did a couple courses, um, and put myself out there a little bit more. And then I think as my lifting got better too, it sort of added a little bit of authority within the local good life space, because I know within my gym, there aren't a lot of powerlifters. There's more powerlifters than there's ever been, but that's something that I've always sort of had that niche on. So mm. I think just putting all of that together, just putting myself out there, taking responsibility of my own shit. I think that's what sort of like led me to getting myself out of that hole because to to leave Australia and have a really successful PT business and to return and experience that like build up 12 week period and have one session and go into three and a half thousand dollars worth of debt a lot of people would just call it quits there but I knew especially after you know working labor jobs working markets during snowstorms working in hospitality and having to you know work the, in the middle of the night and stuff like that for absolutely you know fuck all in terms of like the wage over in, in the UK, this is what I wanted to do. And I needed to prove to myself that if I was going to make it in the industry, that I need to get through this this tough period. And yeah. it sort of, I guess, led to everything that's happened today. It's a really interesting way of putting it, man. Like, I think I had a call with a client yesterday and like, he's a PT too. So like after our session, he was like, um, I just want to chat to you about like the industry and like PT and stuff. And one of the biggest questions he asked yesterday was just like, when do you, go out and take that leap like when do you when do you know that it's time you know he's like getting paid by the gym to do pt cushy job does sessions you know whatever goes home with very little responsibility and i just said man the sooner you can take responsibility for every aspect of your job and your career and your business and your actions as a person and the sooner you identify how bad you want it and you're willing to do everything that it takes to get it it's like that's when you're ready yeah it's like it's not your fault it's still your responsibility you've got to make sure that you show up like you you want it more than anything and it's like those two things together is like when you can identify if it's time to do that and that can be as soon as possible or it might need to you might need to work on that you know yeah 100 percent. and i think that's going to tie in, in it's layers and layers everywhere all the time but i think that'll tie into today as well like we were i've seen a few of your tweets and that of just like the the ownership mindset in the nft space as well it's like it's not like the project's fault did you do the adequate yeah. research that you needed to and then what are you going to do about it if it, if it was the project that tanks like okay what's what's next what are you doing about it did you put yourself in a position where you couldn't recover like all of those kind of considerations i think are, are really really important yeah absolutely um and i think it sort of goes with the culture of society today it's 
we're in a very much a woe is me sort of society where people love to deflect blame onto anyone apart from themselves. And I think that if you're able to look internally and just be like, all right, this is where I'm at. This is where I want to be. What do I need to do to get there? And what am I doing that is detrimental to that sort of, uh, I guess, goal? Um, I think that's a, a really strong like personality trait to have to yeah. be able to yeah. and to have that self-awareness too. Um, I think that that's absolutely massive. Yeah. All right, so diving into the content. So I, I think the main three things that we sort of need to address today is the, the people listening either don't know what NFTs are or they do, but they don't get it yet. Yeah. Like they, they know of it, but they don't really understand what it is. Um, they don't know where to go to actually start to learn and understand all of these th- things and get involved, even if they're like, this looks like a thing, but I, don't, yeah. I just don't know where, where to, to start. Go. Yeah. Um, and then obviously there's going to be the other side that is like, it's a scam. I can just fucking right click it and save it. Um, shout out to Joe Rogan for promoting that on his <laughs> podcast. <laughs> um, so just, I guess, getting our heads around all of that. I think where we need to start though is before we dive into NFT specifically is just like what even crypto is. Yeah. Like yeah. I think people still think a lot it's of a people. Scare. Yeah. It's a Ponzi. A, a lot a of people scam. still have this idea that crypto is like drug dealers on the internet on the Silk <laughs> Road and shit um, but it, it obviously it's not now uh, a couple of weeks ago just to, to throw some credibility at it the CBA has announced that they're going to be trading crypto in their um, yeah, net bank which stuff, is yeah. fucking big 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 news and I like even in the last month these sponsorships like Formula 1 showing up I saw it yep. in uh, Le Mans series over the weekend you take deposits on your homes now in crypto too I think I yeah. from like certain builders yeah. yeah I think even locally like Western Bulldogs have coin spot on mm. their, their jumper at the back of their jumper yeah, and I yeah. think it was could have been Newcastle Jets might have no sorry um, Watford have Bitcoin as a sponsor yeah, or do. Doge as a sponsor or something yeah. like that um, and what was the arena in America the basketball yeah, Stable one? Center yeah it's Crypto.com huge. Arena yeah, yeah, yeah they're it's everywhere it's at the moment yeah. Crypto.com Adele yeah, just crazy. took his 25 million dollar uh, wide receiver payment at LA. Yeah, LA Rams. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. Bitcoin. All in Bitcoin, 25 mil. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it, it's, it, I, I think it, we can safe to say it's a thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 100%. This point. Um, so what got you, because I know you were in crypto first. Yep. So what you got, what you interested uh, in the whole crypto world? Honestly, the same reason why everyone else gets into it, greed, fast money. That's, <laughs> to put I it love bluntly, it. I love it. it's true. <laughs> like, I, I like it. Most people don't get in for the technology. They get in because they see everyone else is making money of it, mm. from it and they want a slice of it. So I got in when I was working in London um, at I think the, the peak of the bull run in December, November, December 2017. Um, and I just saw people posting about it on Facebook and just like your everyday person, like who's invested in, in Bitcoin? Um, how do I get Bitcoin? Uh, and I had no idea. So I was like, all right, well, people are posting about it. They're saying it's cool. It's, it's fine. They're making money. So... I want a piece of that. So I put in, I think, maybe 50 pounds, 100 bucks, something like that. Um, bought my first bit of Bitcoin, uh, let it ride, watched it go up and down a little bit, bought a, a, a few more um, currencies at the time. Um, and I think the money doubled. And then like two weeks later, that was the end of the bull run. So I literally <laughs> bought the top. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I was in the red two weeks later. Um, and I think the, the big mistake that people make when it comes to crypto is once the fast, easy money goes, people yeah. tune out and they think that that's the end and the opportunity is gone. Yeah. And yeah. where I credit myself is that I still continue to pay attention. I did my research on the space. I sort of started to understand why things were happening, what different currencies were trying to do. And it made sense that like as technology progressed that it might have a play, a part to play in the future. Um, and we're starting to see that now. So I started to pay a bit more attention putting a little bit more money, hoping that it would go up. It didn't, it went down even further. Did the same thing, more money in, down. Um, and then me, like I tuned out as well. I tuned out for a couple yeah. of years and it wasn't until the um, the first lockdown of last year where I needed something to do. I was bored, man. I had yeah. absolutely nothing to do and I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw a tweet about the Bitcoin halving and I have no idea what, that, what the fuck is the Bitcoin halving. Um, and traditionally, this is this event, which is where the, um, I don't know 100% off the top of my head, but basically the, the amount of Bitcoin that the miners can yeah. Yeah. mine is halved. It's left, yeah. Um, and that happens every four years. And traditionally, that starts the, the next phase of the bull run. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, if this is the case, I should start paying attention again and I should start throwing a little bit more money at it. So I started doing that, um, just researching on YouTube, watching influencers, taking in a bit of information from everywhere and making my own educated uh, guesses on it. So... 
Um, you know, with Ethereum, for example, there's a lot of congestion. The gas fees are high. Um, I invested in Matic Polygon at, I think, one cent American or two cents American because the idea for that one was to scale Ethereum and to make things cheaper. Mm. To me, that makes sense. So I put some money in that and I'll just, I'll think about real world application. Like, where is the world going and what can these sort of things do to help? Um, another one, Chili's, which is a sport based um, crypto yeah. um, that have had a bunch of major teams put on um, their own cryptocurrencies. That sort of made sense to me. So I started to invest. Things started to sort of build, build, build. And then at the end of last year, things just took off. And then I remember being uh, away for for New Year's, going to Echuca, and my portfolio had like tripled in that week. And that was the first time where I was like, holy shit, like something is about to happen. And I just started, I mean, just as PTs do, we document what we do on Instagram. I just started posting, you know, charts or things like, you know, I bought this at this and this is how much it is now. And people see that and they started paying attention and people started asking questions as well. Um, and after a while, you get sick of answering the same questions all the time, don't you? It's like, what's crypto? Uh, is this a good investment? Is Dogecoin good? I bought Shiba. What's Cardano doing? This is going to the moon. Have you heard of it? Um, and yeah, I eventually just like tuned out from that, refused to ask any more questions. And um, yeah, just continued doing what I was doing, you know, posting it here or there. And then the um, sell-off in May happened where, you know, everything dumped and no one could sell anything on exchanges and you're looking at your portfolio and it, it's plummeted like 50% and you can't you can't exit because yeah. it's just a free-falling knife. Um, and yeah, I, I actually like withdrew completely from crypto at that point. That was the first time since I'd entered the space that I completely exited. Um, and I was actually bearish for a while. I don't know if you guys recall me posting, but um, I thought that we were probably going to go to, you know, 20,000 before we went up to where we got to, I think 70,000 US dollars. Um, so I withdrew. I had my last hundred in in crypto. I started playing futures trading, managed to catch the absolute bottom of Bitcoin at 28,000 and I rode that back up. Um, nice. And with that money, I think during the sixth lockdown, um, again, I needed something to do and I was up one night and I just Googled NFTs that aren't on Ethereum because Ethereum costs a lot of money yeah. to transact on and especially for the everyday person, like they don't want to spend 150 Australian dollars, $200 or whatever it is on mm. a transaction. And despite having a little bit to play with, I'm not really willing to do that personally, um, especially because you know, that, that adds up over time. So I Googled um, NFT. Well, I essentially knew what an NFT was. I'd, I'd bought um, Decentraland during last year, the coin, and I'd bought uh, Beeple's B20 earlier in the year too. So in terms of the NFT tokens, I've had experience with um, trading those sort of things, but not the, not the JPEGs, not the JPEGs that we know and love now. Um, and you hear stories of like crypto punks of uh, training for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, Board Ape Yacht Club is now, you know, blown up. Uh, these, I think they're called Ethereum stones or whatever. These rocks were like trading for yeah, millions, millions of dollars. Yeah, that's what and, got me in or got my attention. And yeah. I was like, dude, what's going on? And I recall last year a tweet that I saw and it said, DeFi for 2020, NFTs are going to be that of 2021. Mm. And that was an example of... Um, not completely tuning out of the space. Yeah, the money is not you know constantly going up, but just being present, you see an opportunity there. So I was like, okay, um, NFTs are going to be massive. I understand the, the technology behind it. I understand that there's going to be a good entry point somewhere. I just need to find it. Um, and I found Solana, um, which is essentially a, a blockchain of itself, a network of itself. Uh, low transaction cost, high transaction speed. Uh, and that's perfect for the everyday person. So I... Um, I jumped in the next day. I bought a bunch of Solana with the the remaining crypto that I had or the the remaining US dollars that I had. Um, and the next day, it literally took off. <laughs> and from there, the rest is history. I've um, just somehow, I hate to say it, but I've managed to become like a micro NFT influencer just by documenting and people not being aware of how to use the space. I found myself in a bit of position of authority. And now I think, especially in the last week or so, it's really started to reflect on Twitter as well you know, across the, the broader Solana community. Um, and yeah, that's essentially my, my crypto and NFT experience to date. It's, yeah. it sucked me in particularly during this lockdown. It's given me something to do. Um, and the last four months have just been a blur because it's just been constantly go, 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 just learn, jump in things, try this, try that. And yeah, it's, it's a wild, it's literally the wild west. Yeah. Crypto is the wild mm. west. Yeah. So I think bring it back for someone who maybe Adam said a lot of words that you don't understand, um, <laughs> to, to, but a lot of people will know where Adam's at. So if you do, that's cool. It'll just be a refresher. 
cryptocurrency essentially is this you can look at it as like we're kind of saying like let's get in let's make some money and all that kind of stuff and the the adage is like you buy crypto to make money and then you stay in crypto for the to change the world yes yeah. like mm-hmm. that's that's the message from everyone that's been in for a long yeah. enough time we don't have time to go into decentralization and the importance and all of that and all of that kind of shit but it, the the guys that I've been listening to lately are kind of talking about this shift into so we've just come out of the information age before that we had the technological age then we had the industrial age before that and there's these long waves repeated kind of times where things happen as a society globally then you've got this kind of layered in this well, the American dollar is starting to look sketchy with the amount of money that they're printing happens here as well. Like it's all a bit like, okay, so our, our global currency is starting to look a bit iffy and we've got this thing that for a way oversimplification, and I'll, I'll give you guys a resource to go find out, but like essentially what you're looking at is a currency that's also, you use the term a network that'll allow people to do shit in a different space. Yeah, it essentially solves a problem. Yeah. Um, and it gives power back to the people. Yeah. That's, that's right. the that's the biggest thing of decentralization is that yeah, people create these blockchains, these currencies, but no one owns the space. Yeah. And it's yeah, it's a free ride for anyone to do whatever they like. Yeah. So we're coming back to the ages thing. So we're moving into an age of autonomy. So we all know that AI is a thing. Like we're already using it every day. You don't realize it's just like your social media is AI. It's learning you all the time and it's trying to figure out even like your Netflix suggestions and all that kind of stuff. We already have AI. It's just like in a different user face to what when we think AI, we think a robot or like yeah. some virtual reality goggles or something like that, which is all coming and it's all in progress right now. I'm actually pretty tempted to go find some VR goggles for my sim. I think that's going to be a fucking I've thing. I've got an Oculus. Oculus. Yeah. yeah I've got one. <laughs> I didn't know that Zuck owns Oculus. It's part of Does the, Zuck's... Yeah. Terrifying. I'm throwing it out. Yeah, <laughs> it's terrifying. Facebook's... It's probably going to brainwash me all now. The, all the, all the reading I've done the last two weeks, Facebook scares the shit out of me now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like something small that came up in my Twitter feed yesterday that I think is a really good insight into what's coming. Um, someone... It was a guy from the Soul Network as well was talking about digital... Uh, clothing yeah and it was like influencers yeah. will pay and in even like general population like uh, particularly women won't wear the sam outfit twice and half the time these influencers only buy the clothing to wear it for a photo shoot and then they get rid of it so they're talking about being able to buy digital um, clothing that you can take this the snap in and it only costs you $14. You send your photo, they put the clothing on you it comes back and then you can post it on your Instagram and that's it and I was like Okay, that's lame <laughs> to do that. It's like yeah. hiring the jet to take yeah. photos. But then if you follow that down, it's like who's had the problem of like, I want to buy something online, but I need to go try it on. I need to make sure it fits. I want to see what it looks like. Or like obviously the movement of the last probably five to 10 years has been like, let's introduce plus size models and all that kind of stuff. It's like, well, just make an avatar of yourself in this environment and the AI will put the clothing on you and get you to walk and get you to squat to make sure you're tights are squat proof and all that kind of shit and it's like okay this is going to a really really interesting place and as far as that's like a little bit maybe away from what we're talking about but this nft entry space is is about that it's it's heading in that direction right yeah absolutely um so basically what what an nft is is a non-fungible token a non-fungible means irreplaceable um and that's where these things get their values from because you can't you can't copy something that's already there on the blockchain. You're able to on the blockchain. You're able to source back the transaction history to prove that it came from the legit source. Um, and the easiest way for someone to sort of understand what it is is going back to like Pokemon cards or Yu-Gi-Oh cards. If you think back, you know, f- well, over 15 years, 20 years ago. Um, yeah, we're I ha- that old. Now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I turned 29 last month. I'm like, um, yeah, like you, you've had. You know, people go to Toys R Us and, and buy like a pack of Pokemon cards and they get a real rare one. And then you've got people that go to the $2 shop in Bay Street, Port Melbourne, and they got the exact same one. And they're in, they're, they're in the playground and they're like, oh, I'll trade you this for this. And you've got no real way of validating if they look 100% identical, which one's real and which one's not. And if one is real, it's going to be worth more value compared to the one that's worth 50 cents. Mm. Um, that's where the technology behind NFTs comes in. Um, and I think that as we as we get further into like the the metaverse and ai and stuff like that if 
if uh, clothing labels and big brands release certain things and they're limited editions or limited supply, you're not going to be able to wear that fake stuff. Mm. Um, yeah. If Nike put out a bunch of shoes or whatever, and there's a thousand of them, you're going to be able to verify that the person that's got that is is wearing the authentic shoe um, rather than having the, the Vic Market version of the yeah. shoe or something like that. And I think... Once you once you get around the, the JPEGs and the, the stupid pixelated pictures and stuff like that, and you start to realize the technology behind it, the mm-hmm. verification yeah. and the authenticity, I think that's where like the brain just explodes and you're like, wow, this, this technology is here to stay and this technology has the potential to be part of our lives going forwards. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really exciting. In terms of the metaverse, just the stuff that you've just said, I haven't even like thought of that so it just goes to show how early the concept is where you can put something out there like that and just be like holy shit that makes a lot of sense okay it's not happening right now but give it three four five years um and i I had a discussion in the dms last week with one of my friends and it was more like his emotional negative attachment to the concept of the metaverse and nfts and Mm -hmm. stuff and how it might take away from like you know regular life and we spend a lot of time, you know, digitally behind screens, behind computers yep. and stuff like that. And, you know, physical physical activity is important. Maybe it takes some, some uh, I guess, effort away from that. But I just tried to say, like, embrace the change, embrace technology in a way that it can enhance your life. Because as much as I do agree with that sort of stuff, that, you know, spending time in the metaverse for some people might be unhealthy, mm. there's also going to be so many benefits to it too. And particularly in our industry with fitness, it's like, the sky is the limit. Fitness is so broad and there's so much that can be done with it. It's absolutely crazy where, where this thing can possibly go. Um, and I think the fact that, you know, people are iffy on Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook and the rebranding of Meta just shows how serious the people are taking this whole thing. And mm. at the moment in its infancy stage, um, it might just be, you know, cartoon profile pictures and stuff like that. But give it two, three, four years, who knows where the innovation is coming and where we're going to head. Yeah, I, I think it comes in stages. Like we had the conversation and was like, um, I think you use the Transformers analogy. It's like you can buy a Transformer. That's what you buy an NFT, then you buy another NFT and then they can make a thing and then that thing's worth more than the other thing. And it was like, that's what sort of where we started when we're having this conversation. Yeah. And then I kind of paired that with, I think Gary V was talking about like flex culture. And I was like, okay, I get that. Like, I like nice cars and I like nice shit because I, I buy expensive Jordans because I like to wear them and say that I've got them and I put them on my Instagram story and shit. It's like, I have that behavior. And that's, it's funny, like, since seeing the NFTs thing, and this is no disrespect to anyone that has them, it's probably the most pretentious thing I've ever done. I started noticing, I don't know if you guys remember, um, Catch did a, a Jordan a J1 release. They were just like red and black, but they were super cheap on Catch. And now every time I see them, I'm like, those catch pair <laughs> they don't count <laughs> it's like in my head i'm <laughs> yeah. just like fuck that is like that is nft culture right there it's yeah. like uh, we all three of us have an nft everyone's our, guilty of it though. yeah we yeah. all have a profile picture now on twitter that's our best nft because we want to like showcase that then we've got this thing and that yeah. assigns us to a certain group of people and all those human traits that we all have it's, yeah it's but the community part of it's cool man like I got in I got in for the money like I'll be honest it's like cool I'm in an age now where it's like diversifying my investments making my money work for me thinking 10 20 years ahead yeah like I got into it for that but then I was like that classical crypto thing is like go in for the money stay for the people yeah like, um it, it got cool it got real cool to be like oh you know I'm part of like d gods or whatever and it's just like you know everyone was just like fucking shout out to this dude this fucking legend you know and then you're just connecting with all these people that you didn't even know existed yeah and it's like wow like that's it's it, like it's awesome you know it's it's even in lockdown specifically like maybe the timing was perfect it's like engagement was low didn't really want to fucking do zoom catch-ups with my friends and like, that's fucking lame after the first one like i don't want to play fucking hangman on zoom and shit like yeah. you know and drink every time i do it make myself feel like shit the next day <laughs> even more depressed it's like all of a sudden we're talking about other like just random cool shit meeting different people and then talking about something that like had uh, uh, like a direction that you were keen on. Like once I got past that, like, oh, you buy something, flip it for money. Mm-hmm. I started looking at actually what the fucking projects were. And it's like this the cool this cool project or this cool profile picture. There's actually other stuff behind it yep. that it you know they're doing f- as and you can be a part of that. Yep. And depending on how that's designed, you actually have a say in how that actually works. You know, so then all of a sudden you're part of all of these things and, you, and your your voice and your decisions matter. Yeah. You know, so then it's like, it's not just 
me putting up a profile picture of like a, a fucking hippo or something, you know, which, which people are just like, what the fuck are you yeah. guys talking about? Like, or a cat, like yeah. all, those, all those cats that were coming up. And it's yeah. like, no, 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 no. This is like, this is the flex. Yeah. But then it's like behind it, it's like, you're actually part of a group of people that you actually value. Yeah. It's like CrossFit people talk about CrossFit and keto people talk about keto. It's like, you, you want to be identified as part of that group. And so that's your way of, of putting it forwards. And if you're, representation of that group is like i got fucking shredded doing crossfit and i'm an awesome athlete you want to tell people that you you're yeah. awesome at it and you did it and you did it as part of this community it's the same like my d god that i have is my profile picture i'm like i think it's fucking awesome yeah and so it's like mad. i'm gonna show everyone <laughs> yeah. that i've got it and like the the d particularly the d gods uh, it's probably the biggest uh group that i'm in at least on twitter it's like i'm in like this subgroup now of people with like bulls jerseys yeah. And we all have conversations like, okay, this is this is a thing. And I think that entry point wise, if you're sitting there listening like, okay, cool, like you guys are in a cult. Like <laughs> there's, there's different there's different ways in, I think. And the first one is obviously going to be looking to make money. And then most people that are like, I see Adam's posting this and Ben's posting that and whatever. Fucking Meerkat's made all this money and I sold too late. <laughs> <laughs> but like, that's the first step that people start to pay attention. It's like, okay, there's money yeah. to be made in here. Similar to crypto when everyone starts posting like on the bull run, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm making heaps of money. And then mm. when it goes quiet, it's like, oh, yeah. just don't talk about that for the next nine months until it starts again. That's the time that you actually want to start being involved. And I think NFTs are the same. So it's like step one, cool if you're interested in making money it's probably a good place to start from there we start to talk about projects and community and then we start to talk about utility which i mm -hmm. think is like when we're talking about the dresses and all that kind of stuff like the the clothing lines and all of that that will eventually come out that all exist and overlap with this flex culture as well and utility i think is going to be the really interesting spot i know um like you're in the jelly beasts as well that are yep. like they're going to be able to be used in multiple different games yep. that's that's going to take off and are we going to get a, a toy version of them as well if we wanted are we yeah sick oh no i can't remember I, i've got i've got so many projects i don't know which one <laughs> it's hard to keep up isn't <laughs> it like I'm, lo I'm looking to clear out my discord and it's like i can't get rid of this one because of xyz i can't yeah. get rid of this and you're yeah. still stuck with like 40 different discords 50 different ones yep. and yeah, I've just, mine are just ranked now. Yeah. So like, these are the ones I, I'm bullish on. The rest of yeah. them, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think one of the, like, we spoke earlier about, like, the fear of meta and the, the going into that kind of the metaverse world. We were all scared of social media. Like, every, we were having this discussion about the tech, the uh, information age. It was the same kind of thing, like, this is going to fuck everyone. Everyone's on their phone, blah, 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 blah. They can't, we say it all the time. These young kids can't have conversations. <laughs> But it's like there was advantages to that as well. Lots of stuff happens. Our business doesn't exist without that time happening. Yeah, 100%. Like we operate 100% online. So I guess moving into this next stage, I'd be curious to open up like just the conversation. I think that the Jelly Beasts are a good example as to what's potential. Like what have you seen from them? How is that going to play out? Like, because everyone's fear is ready player one, right? Yeah. It's like we're all going to live in caravans, put VR goggles on and just play these games. Jelly Beast, from my understanding, is a way to own part of that game. Yeah, essentially, rather than trying to create the metaverse, they want to be a part of the metaverse. And I think that that was the big selling point to me because all of these projects that are, you know, promising games and metaverses and stuff, they're all looking to be the the metaverse, essentially, yeah. that big thing. And what I like about the Jelly Beast is they just want to be a part of everywhere. So you can plug and play your, your Jelly, essentially, which, whichever metaverse you choose to use. Um, and I think that that's really cool there where it's it's just contributing without creating. And I think for a lot of people, especially getting into it, they don't have the means to be creating drastic things. They just want to be a part of it. And I think that's where like the NFTs themselves, they get a lot of value is that you're not just buying a JPEG. You're essentially buying a membership to a decentralized community yeah, or good. to a business that you can be a stakeholder in and have the say of where the future goes. Yeah. Um, and then applying that, you know, to the real world, like imagine, imagine being part of like a gym community and being able to mold the future of the gym rather than being told, oh, we're going to take away four squat racks and you're going to have to deal yeah. with this F45 knockoff for the next few years. Yeah. Yeah. What, what if you are able to say, well, the, the gym needs, you know, X, Y, Z um, and the community wants it. So, you know, we're, you're here to serve the community. 
go yeah. after it. Uh, and yeah. that sort of concept is yeah. just ridiculous. It's awesome. And that's the, the term we used earlier was that decentralization. And exactly. That's, that's what it is. It's true like group input into making decisions. And it's hilarious. Like, like we're obviously moving to Mighty Networks and when we were talking about moving to that platform, we were like, well, it'd be good if we could do this, we could do this, we could do this. And then like two weeks after we started yeah. talking about like, all right, the next rollout has yeah. this. And we were like, fuck. Um, but we actually had conversations like we would have to have like a voting board in our gym to be like okay what's the next piece of equipment yep. we're gonna buy and all that kind of stuff and it's like this is something that i think everyone's been crying out for and it was it's interesting i was having i think i was having a discussion with you recently jace of like my space was just kind of like an introduction to social media it was like you had your friends on there and then you didn't yeah. really had, find it had music anyone outside <laughs> of that and yeah. then it's like well now if i go to facebook i can interact with people i know and stay in touch with people from like a broader circle maybe i can start to follow businesses or groups or whatever now facebook for my eyes and i think most people under 35 facebook is just groups yep. it's like people only go in there to to do groups which makes sense why the discord community has exploded as well and why the numbers are, of discord users have exploded and moved away from just being gamers and nerds on there that it's actually like the average joe who wants to be a part of something and then we went to instagram because like my parents and my grandparents had facebook so i didn't want to post the shit that i wanted to post and them see it so i went to instagram and then i don't know about you but like when i got inst into instagram and actually started using it, it was like all these other lifters from Melbourne, Australia, even around the world. And I was like, this is fucking cool. Like, I feel like I'm kind of part of a community of other people. Like, I, I can just follow people that like the shit that I like. I don't have to follow like, everyone. Yeah, like my friends like fishing. I don't fucking like fish. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to see the photo of your fish. Like, put it on Facebook. <laughs> Whereas, like, on Instagram, I'd be like, fuck, Adam hit a PB on his deadlift. That's mad. And we could have a chat about it. And it became that sort of community vibe. I don't know about you guys, but my Instagram now is dog shit oh it's terrible it's like the most yeah. random and because it's curated for business too like it's i follow more of my niche market than people that i would necessarily like hang out with on the weekend yeah. sort of thing yeah so that's kind of biased it um so i think yeah this whole idea that i can be part of a group of people that own this thing that all have like-minded views and values at least around one topic yeah and then you can make friends and all that kind of stuff within it it's almost like it went out and now it's shrinking back in and you can be a member of multiple smaller groups rather than just like this monstrosity of like I think I follow like fucking fifteen hundred people on Instagram. Yeah, like and how many how many people do you care about that you follow? Yeah, yeah, it's like that's not a community. Whereas like Discords, even the ones that have big numbers, the people in there that contribute are usually the same group of people, and you can kind of get a trend of what's happening. And yeah, the trips me out like the fuck the language, man. Like, yeah, 100%. yeah. I nearly wrote um, sir. As to, as Dean, to Dean because he was like thank you sir and I was like oh, do I and I was like oh, I'm not, gonna, not yet <laughs> so delete 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 <laughs> yeah um, so yeah I think I think that's interesting to see that kind of to kind of happen and you've posted a lot about this is like being early to the internet it's being early to the car or, or whatever um, where do you see next year the next five years in NFT progress have you thought that far ahead it's so hard to say man mm. it's so hard to say because the technology is so new and you don't know like what big brain person is going to come and just explode something that's going to be awesome um i think from that mark zuckerberg and um gary v interview i think augmented reality might be in within five years or something like that yep. um which which is not the complete you know vr metaverse experience but it's the start so um I just imagine that something along those lines for major brands and major companies and stuff like that. But it's it's honestly so hard to say. I wouldn't be able to like pinpoint a, you know, this is the direction that we're heading mm -hmm. because you just don't know. It's it's essentially a blank canvas right now, which is which is crazy because you're never really given that in the world. Like in terms of you're you're in a day dot and you can you can just try. You can yeah. try and you know, if it doesn't work out that's fine because you can pivot and take another direction too. There's no there's no status quo in like, this is what you do and this is the next step and this is the next step. It's like, this is what we've got available at the moment. Let's try this. If that doesn't work, okay, let's try that. If that doesn't work, okay, let's try that. This is working well. How can we enhance it sort of thing? Um, yeah, there's no rules. There's no rule book on mm -hmm. like success or 
you know, building something for the future at the moment because it's it's literally at the ground. I yep. think that's I think that's the like the intriguing part of it for some people. I know it is for me, and it, I know it is for you because I know how you think. <laughs> um, it's just the opportunity. It's like if you can if you can give me something where like the possibilities are that broad, and it's mm. like there's so much chance opportunity that you can make things work and just try and fuck up and see what works well, and then get onto something that works good and run it till it. You see something else is like, I'm in. You yeah. know, and then it's like if we can start to integrate fitness and what we do for a living um, into that same place, or even even just think about it. Like we, how long we talk about it when we went away for that weekend? Yeah. Like you know, and I'd wait. We had way too much caffeine. We just fuck up, man. I was just going off. <laughs> and I was like, I was it was productive. Then it kind of got almost unproductive. And now, um, like that just kind of proved to us that like this is we're early. And for once, or we feel early for once, and it's like there is that much opportunity. It's like I really want to start to like see what we can do here and yeah. like be a part of some minds that probably know a little bit more than us, or even just be in a position where we can start to throw some ideas around and bounce some things off and go, Oh, what do you guys think of this, this, and that? And it's like if we can make that work, and it's like we, we can be part of that shift, you know, even if it is just for our industry as well which I think is fucking exciting. Yeah, for sure. And something I've really noticed with the space is that everyone is friendly and helpful. Yeah. And like beyond friendly and helpful. You know how you hear like, oh, this person is such and such is the nicest guy and this group of people are the nicest people. I've asked for help, you know, coming into the space. Like, you know, how do we go about NFT marketing? Uh, can I get some feedback on my project? And just examples like that. And people have DM'd me and literally like, you know, given me really good feedback or, you know, led me in the right direction to build what I'm currently building, which we'll get into later. Um, if you want help, there is help. Yeah. And where else can you get that sort of help or that sort of like guidance in, in investing or um, thought-provoking ideas? It's like usually you've got your network or you have to pay for mentorship or something like that. Mm, yeah. So I think just the friendliness of the community and again, it's just it's not a, a massive group of people with a lot of common interests. It's just that one common interest and that same vision for where the world or where the, the future is in the next five years and people want to be a part of that and to grow that. I think that just coming together like that and just being able to like spitball and like have someone there to talk to about it, I think that's one of the most valuable things of the, the community in general. Yeah, 100% agree. And I think before we, I guess, dive into where you're headed and where the discussions are we're having and stuff at the moment and where we want to go. I just want to give a couple of resources um, for you guys if this went over your head or you're interested and you want to know more. Uh, so the book is called, and I wish it wasn't called this because I want to send this to fucking everybody because it's so interesting. It's probably the best financial book I've ever read. And it's almost unfortunate that crypto is in the title because it's like, this is the most, the best explanation I've under, like been given of macroeconomics ever. And I, I've watched a lot of, listened to a lot of podcasts, watched a lot of YouTube videos and read a lot of books and no one's explained it this clearly. Uh, it's called Crypt Crypto Asset Investing in the Age of Autonomy uh, by Jake Ryan. It's on Audible. It's about eight hours long. It's not a heavy read, surprisingly, like I expected I was going to have to sit down on the couch and take notes with this one, but it's kind of like a listen to listen to while you're doing shit and you'll still take most of it on. A few references to like names of stuff that you're like, I, I missed that, but that's okay. <laughs> I'll figure that out in, on Twitter somewhere. I'll see it, see Sir come up and Google what the fuck people are talking <laughs> about, why you're spelling it with an E. Um, and then the other one, which is, I, I want to give both sides of the coin. So we yeah. mentioned earlier, like there's obviously concern moving into this like, meta kind of zone um so if you guys have haven't seen the social network i would watch that uh but then the build on to that is it's joe rogan's episode 1736 which is fucked that he's done that many uh, i'm not going to say the names because i can't pronounce daniel's last name but it's the guy who wrote uh the social dilemma and they go into what the implications potentially could be of the metaverse and the opportunity that it provides us to address the mistakes that we've made with the information age. Yeah. Um, so they talk a lot about, and this is something that I'm pretty keen to carry on if, if we do our own project and even moving forwards in general is the idea of humane tech. So tech must positively affect your life outside of the tech, Absolutely. not detract from it. Yeah. And I think that's such a fucking valuable concept. And I think it's a pliable in this model. Cause like, 
Instagram, right? Like Jace says all the time, like if I had known what Instagram was going to be, I would have just taken photos of my shirt off when it started. Yeah. Like yeah. I thought it was just people posting pictures. Just picture, like, what the fuck uh, is my this? My life's boring. I don't want to take <laughs> yeah. pictures of my life. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's like that in the beginning, it didn't seem to have the potential to have such a positive impact as what we have now. Like we've started having conversations like, okay, if we go down... One of the knocks on NFTs, obviously, the environmental impact of creating crypto, mining it, the processing power, and then the trans transactions and all of that, like, are pretty harsh on the, the power usage, which makes them uh, rough on the environment. So one of the things we've looked at is, like, okay, can we offset that? Do we need to go down the road of looking at, like, well, what's our carbon impact if we go to this new network? We've got all these people, and then we're talking about NFTs as well. It's like, okay, how do we offset that? And it starts to become this, like, thought process of, Maybe we don't reply on Saturdays and Sundays. It's like, go and do shit. Go and train. Mm. Maybe we try and organize. Hey, actually go meet these people in... Like, if you've got a smaller community like a Discord, it's like, hey, everyone, we're going to be here at this time. Let's go train. Let's go watch a movie. Let's actually fucking meet in person. Yeah, absolutely. Not just do 150 characters or whatever on Twitter and start to go down this other road of like, yeah, like I said, humane tech, which for me, I think is really cool. Which yeah. people still want as well. Yeah, more and more, I think. Yeah, that's why I like going to the barber, man. I say it all the time. It's like, I don't want someone fucking, some robot cutting my hair. So yeah. I don't want to talk with somebody without my phone in front of me, listen to some good tunes, drink a beer or a coffee or a water and have someone cut my hair. For sure. Yeah. You know, it's like, there's still a huge need for that. And that's why making this mildly fitness, fitness related gents, yeah, um, it's face-to-face time. speed t- PT is still gold standard. Like yeah. it's still, yeah. people are still going to want it. You know, like everyone says, like, as we move to this digital age and, you know, autonomy and stuff, it's like, what does that mean for fitness? I think if you're selling a 12-week coaching program to teach people how to do online coaching, of course, you're going to say that. Yeah. But I think if you're a good coach and you want to be a good PT and you want to deliver a good service, like people are still going to want that face-to-face interaction. Yeah. And I think that that's always going to be at the top. Definitely. It's the thing we scratch our heads about the most, isn't it? It's like, how do we get in front of people currently? Like yeah, because we've been closed for so long. It's like yeah. all we want to do out is like get in the gym and like work out and do yeah. workshops, workshops, all yeah. that shit. Yeah. It's, it's so hard. So yeah, it's really cool having that tangible element to it for sure. All right, so the fitness part has come. Where do you see? Obviously, you probably just see Iron Dogs taking over the world. <laughs> um, but where do you see NFT fitness? How do they meet? How does that happen? Oh, it, could, it could be a number of things. I was actually thinking about this pretty hard during the week as to how to answer this question. But the most obvious thing for me in terms of VR and AR is like group fitness. Yeah. yeah. Like Les Mills body pump or spin classes or something like that. Being able to do that from your home and be in the metaverse at the same time. Um, I don't know how it fits into to coaching in terms of like the VR and the AR. I think that's something that's going to have to be innovated. I don't have the answer to that. But maybe... Um, being able to have your coach present but not present in a way, yeah. if that makes yeah. sense. I was thinking about that too and I was like, that doesn't solve the problem of a coach who goes online. Mm. The, time, I mean? the time for you, money. Because you're still like, investing. Yeah. You know, It's like most people pump themselves in the gym, get their business going face-to-face, make an authority in their area and then they go, what's next? I need to actually be out of my business. Yeah. It's like I was thinking of that tech too and I'm like, that puts me back in. Yeah. You know, where th- I'm still kind of putting time yeah i think what i see is is that it's like coaches at home on the couch got the vr goggles who's in the room but not in the room Mm. old mates training there's some kind of link that you can see where they are what they're doing and you're doing like live movement assessments and it's like well that's a pt session but you're not in the same place which is kind of cool Mm. and then i think that for that next step group it's like all right like you said les mills but you've all got barbells and where, like, yeah. if, if you were coming to do our squat tech workshop, you don't leave your house. Yep. You go out to your squat rack in, in your garage or whatever, and we're there. Yeah, so we're not there. I, I definitely can see, even from, like, where like our business is at the moment, like, I can see ourselves presenting mm. virtually yep. where people are, like, just more encompassed in an environment that's similar to what they would be in real life yeah. but it's just digital sort of like the, the Zoom workshops but in a classroom yeah, yeah. yeah we're walking like around exactly. we're interactive we're presenting people can yeah. like be immersive in that in that setting which I think would be much better um, in terms of like concentration engagement and stuff because yeah. like sitting at a sitting at a desk looking at a screen isn't great for a PT yeah you know everyone wants to move around and whatnot so I can definitely see that happening yeah 
we sort of started to see that with Decentraland as well. So Decentraland is a metaverse, one of the biggest metaverses on Ethereum. Um, and they'll have like conference centers where you can go as your avatar into the conference center and watch a conference, which is essentially run on Zoom or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that sort of stuff is already happening a little bit. Um, I was also thinking in terms of like augmented reality of like a, a, a plug and play sort of coach too. So it might be like the body of the coach saying, all right, it's your warm up set, pick a, pick a weight that, you know, is at this percentage of the working weight or something like that. And that constant guidance sort of thing like that. Yeah. Um, but in terms of NFT technology, we could be looking at a future where like the, the membership model is an NFT. Mm -hmm. So it's like you're, you've got a gym that has a, a thousand packs and you've got a thousand memberships and the only way to gain access to this gym is to have one of these memberships and it can only be you know bought and sold you can't yeah, like yeah. go to the gym and be like i want to join yeah um and then there's also in terms of fitness businesses like an nft to where like you can get discounts on coaching discounts on courses discounts mm -hmm. on supplements discounts on apparel lines mm -hmm. um access to these sort of people like there's yeah. it's honestly like such a blank canvas and everything that we're doing right now I think that there's a way to incorporate that on a membership level. Yeah. And then when you look at like the community aspect of it too, it's like you're not just buying that membership to access the facility, you're getting that membership to access a network of people too. And I think that's the yeah. biggest value of, of NFTs in general. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think that, that decentralization word comes up there again because it's like if there's only a thousand NFTs and you, you think of those as like your membership cards, there's only a thousand of them. You want everyone in that gym then to make the decisions what's happening in the gym because you want the value of that token to go up. Yeah, yeah. You want to be the, you want to be who wants to be a part of that community it has to have extreme value. Definitely. Right. So it's it goes away from fucking benches that slip and you get concussion landing on your jaw, <laughs> like some local gyms around here. Man, um, that was ridiculous. And like those big box chains then come under pressure from a gym who's more interested in their community and working on driving the value up. And it, that like loyalty, the loyalty card thing was the, the tipping point, at least for me. And I think mm. it was for you as well. Yeah, so like, innovation wise, yeah. We need to have a really serious conversation about this. And it was literally a cafe locally that said, it, they basically said, we're going to launch an NFT. There was a $600 value a month giveaway to anyone that owned one. And you got 20% off all orders all the time if you had one. There you go. And I was like, that's so fucking yeah. simple. Like, yeah. it's And they're going to have like special events that only you can go to. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. So um, it's like, that's 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 the gym membership. That's the discount code. Definitely. And, and imagine that on like a fitness convention level as well. Yeah. Like mm. if you had access to, you know, like a, an education conference or um, the Arnold or something like that. Mm. And it's like, if you have access to this membership, you're now going to get discounts or free entry or VIP access or like a, a welcome pack or, you know, that yeah. sort of stuff too. And it's just like, how can I constantly provide value to my community? And it goes beyond like the base level that can evolve over time. It's not a fixed thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 100%. So introduce us to your upcoming project. So Iron cool. Dogs. Cool. What is it? Yeah. How does it work? Um, so basically... Throughout this whole NFT experience, I've, I played with the idea of creating an NFT and I do most of my like thinking in the shower. I don't know if you guys are like that too, where you just fucking end up there half an hour in deep thought. But like I would just constantly like daydream like how to like create an NFT and I was like, how cool would it be if like there was a powerlifting NFT and like you could use your powerlifting NFT to like win other stuff. And from there, like it just evolved to like, all right, well, what happens if you could have like a coaching mem your, your NFT was your coaching membership and you could gain access to you know elite tier coaching um, as well as get the benefits of being within the NFT ecosystem and it, it just started to snowball from there so the um the Iron Dogs is basically the first ever fitness and, and powerlifting NFT to exist um on Solana there are, there are a couple other fitness NFTs where it's like this is like a, a bloke wearing a singlet or something like that or like an animal that's jacked or something um I know on Ethereum, for you guys to check out if you haven't already, Gym Bros, uh, yeah. an Ethereum NFT that are basically trying to crowdfund a, a gym in the Gold Coast where the NFT is the membership. So that's the first like actual NFT innovation, which is cool. Um, but from from this perspective, like there's no coaching in, in the, the metaverse. There's no coaching on any sort of NFT project mm. um, and powerlifting is not involved. So it's the first of its kind and the, the two major keys of utility I'll go into the, the real world use case is that it'll have access to, or the holders will have access to, uh, a, what's, I can't remember the, the name, touch free. 
Mm -hmm. um, a touch-free product where you'll be able to do the program, have the resources and have the coaches there to provide the accountability for you to hit your goals. So the big thing that's really clear on both sides of the spectrum is that people in fitness don't know nothing about NFTs and people within the NFT space don't really know anything about fitness. Mm -hmm. So this is sort of bridging the gap between both where people from the NFT space can hit their goals, whether that's fat loss, muscle gain, strength, whatever it may be. And people from fitness can start to get into an NFT or into the NFT space with something that they resonate with. Because I think that that's a massive thing too. And we've seen it with the Crypto Dads project, which has been just massive with dads. It's like, this NFT is me. Mm -hmm. So the idea is that the Iron Dogs NFT is going to represent the people that like going to gyms. It's going to represent strength coaches, powerlifters, personal trainers, um, fitness enthusiasts, just anyone that loves lifting. This is going to be the NFT that speaks out to you. Mm. So that's the um, the concept of the coaching. The plan is to eventually hire a team of coaches or get um, people that I respect and I trust to provide resources into the ecosystem. So the people from coming from the NFT space or people that are trying to make it physically have the resources that they can trust. So they can get off Google, they can get off YouTube, they can get off Instagram and know that what they're doing yeah. based on this information is going to be credible and is actually going to fucking work because that's the big thing with fitness. Too many clowns, not enough circuses. So that's where we sort of, you know, hone in on that and get that sorted. What's really cool about the concept is the other side. So basically what's really big in NFTs is the play to earn aspect or in crypto is the play to earn aspect. Um, and I'm introducing what is called the Barbell League, maybe the Solana Barbell League. I haven't sort of finalized the name of it, but essentially it's going to be a play to earn sporting league based on the NFT token. So yeah. each NFT comes with traits. Um, it's called metadata in the, you know, when you click your fandom wallet, it comes down with like what's in the NFT. Each NFT will have a squat, bench and deadlift personal best. And based on the sport of powerlifting, you're going to be able to stack a few NFTs together, three, um, to create a, a total. We don't have a way to be able to fail lifts and enhance lifts and stuff right now. It's just, it's going to be stacked. Your most three, your biggest three NFTs to create that total. So the competitions will run on a single lift, a squat only, bench only, deadlift only, or full power squat, bench and deadlift. And basically the way that it'll happen over a 48 hour period, you'll enter your first lift, which will get you on the board. You'll enter your second lift, which will uh, go up in a rising barbell form the way the powerlifting does. And the strategy component comes in on the third attempt where you can plug and play. So if you register your three NFTs um, and you're, you know, you're sitting in fifth position coming into the, the third attempt, you can go into the marketplace, grab another one or exchange another one that you've got to be able to push yourself into that top position. Go and buy an Adam so you can get a deadlift. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> um, and what's cool about that is these events, you're going to be able to win stuff. And what do we know about NFTs at the moment? They fucking cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're coming in, you don't want to spend $5,000 on a JPEG that you don't understand. Mm -hmm. So by entering the... I guess the the ecosystem this way you're able to earn that you're able to take your time understand the concept of an nft be engaged with the community and start to make a little bit of money by by winning essentially mm -hmm. and then you know each each event will have you know point scoring so maybe the top 10 will have a 10 to 1 and you'll be able to accumulate points over the season and at the end of the season that's when the big prizes are going to come so the idea is that this nft allocation of 33 33 sells out we crowdfund enough money to be able to, you know, put some serious money into these prizes. And we're talking mm. some of these blue chips that are worth fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. And mm. when you think of it like that, that's absolutely ridiculous, but it's absolutely possible as well. Um, it's a little bit sad that there's probably going to be a lot more money in this sort of thing in virtual powerlifting than actual powerlifting. <laughs> but I think that that's also something that like could be like combated along the way. There could be a way that, you know, we can give back, whether that's sponsoring athletes or, know doing sort of things like that uh, something that i'm really big on in terms of nfts is contribution and something that was big before and is less big now as greed has come in is the charity mm. um the charitable contribution so um selling out or selling out the al allocation we're going to donate a bunch of that allocation to a mental or physical health charity through um a crypto based sort of way of doing it yeah, awesome. um a holder only apparel line too so when it comes to like merge within NFTs, a little bit's wanky, a little bit's not. Um, something that you'd be able to like go out into the gym and not be embarrassed to wear. Yeah, the, I yeah, think, yeah, I think that's yeah. the the idea behind that. Um, so we've got that, the the resource center. So obviously I've, I've put myself in a position of authority through Instagram where people look to me for resources and stuff like that. So the idea is that I'll build, well, we'll build out the Iron Dogs team, we'll build out um, an NFT website basically with 
you know, high level resources or how, how do I find resources? What's a phantom wallet? How do I transact? How do I get money from an exchange into my wallet? What's a safe way of minting? How can I avoid scams? Like just, a, you know, I want to get into it. Where do I start my research? Here you go. Yep. Um, and at the same time to have that holder only like fitness resource too, where, you know, I, I need to learn how to squat. I need to learn how to correct my deadlift. Um, what's progressive overload? What's RP? That sort of thing. There'll be a, a, a resource for that as well. Um, and that's pretty much the the project as it is at the moment. We're obviously in pre-mint, very early stages. And at the moment, it's just about nurturing the community, um, trying to get the Discord pumping, trying to get as many eyes on the project too because no no one can be what I'm offering today. And I know that for fact because no one in the, the Twitter space, the Solano ecosystem, is as is, is big as into fitness as I am or has been as, success, ex, bleh, as successful as I have been in the fitness industry so far. Um, and you know we've got people offering stuff within the NFT ecosystem, but nothing with real-world use case, and nothing that can impact someone beneficially, physically, or you know mentally as well. So I think I think the concept's really cool, and there's no harm in trying. And I think that that's one of the big things that I've taken away from the Stand Up PT course this year is the mindset aspect of it. That you, just try, just try. Yeah. Even if it yeah. doesn't work, just go back to the drawing board and. What else? Don't sit there and say what if and don't sit there and wait for someone to create what you want because no one's going to do it. Just get out there and fucking do it and give it yeah. a go. And there's enough room for everybody to, to eat too. Like, yeah. I think if a lot of people go, oh, well, someone else is doing this project and it's the same with online coaching and stuff. People are like, oh, this person's in competition with me. It's like, well, there's enough. Yeah. It's fucking billions of people in the world. You only like, 30. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's enough for all of us to eat. So, yeah, yeah, that sounds really exciting, man. Like, I love the... I love how thought out it is. Yeah. Um, the concept of like utility, both in and out of the the world's metaverse, real life. The idea of that that championship element is really cool. Yeah, like play, play to earn gaming is massive. Like yeah. I think I'll, we'll talk about that the other day. Like people, I've been gaming since I was fucking five, mm. and even at thirty three, I still cop shit for it. <laughs> and it, like it blows my mind i yeah. don't know why i still do but I, I apparently you get to a certain age and you shouldn't play video games anymore that's well, what people think i probably spent too much money on video games this year then <laughs> well even over my life like i probably invested more time and stuff into that than i have anything outside of my job and maybe yeah. sleeping yeah you know um but if you look at it statistically it's like i think it was like a hundred and over 150 billion plus mm. dollar industry and then if you look at like movies and music it's like they don't even make up a third of it yeah and it's like the, the, the play to earn part of it and even the microtransaction uh, part of gaming now is where the money is. Yeah. And the, the problem at the moment with the microtransactions or one of the problems that people have highlighted is the fact that you don't own the shit. Mm. So there's like, I think I heard a story of a guy who spent like a hundred million dollars on a yacht in a game. And then in the fine print, the game has the right to change, so change it, yeah. anything. And he was going to lose his yacht. So this dude tried to take these guys to court over his super yacht which yeah. I'd be pretty pissed if I spent 100 million but think about it with like Fortnite and the yeah. skins and like I'm I like my vanity items you yeah. know in my games if I've got the skin that people want it makes me feel good yeah you know <laughs> flex, and, flex culture <laughs> yeah well that's it but then it's like but the, the problem there is like people don't own that stuff so like you know sometimes when the next game comes out or like if you play FIFA Ultimate Team or something like you build this super team and the next year it's worth nothing yeah and it's like the the NFT ecosystems and the projects they kind of solve that issue yeah they give you the ability to take your items that are huge in gaming because the money shows that people want it yeah and you can carry them over to other things other metaverses like we've just spoken about with jelly beasts like yeah you can rent your stuff that you bought to someone else and they can actually give you money or, or tokens that you can use for something else as a transaction of giving that to somebody yeah. And it's like, it's kind of happened with World of Warcraft too, like a little bit, yeah. you know, where it's like, hey, use my character because I just want to pay to win. Mm. I don't want to do the stuff. Yeah. But it's like, someone still owns that yeah. character that you, you, you technically own, but you don't. It's like, you're actually going to be able to own this person. Yeah. And someone's just going to come in big whale and go, I'm just going to buy this off you because I don't want to do all the stuff that you did to get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're kind of seeing that with the Trash Pandas too. It's like, they're going away from you mint this and the rarity is all it is. It's like, yeah. you can actually make this something now if yeah. you put the work in yeah. and you play the game. And it's like, that's cool. Yeah. I, I've grown up gaming, but only in like playing racing games. Yeah. And now like after a 10 to 15 year hiatus, cause I couldn't afford a sim and I, the consoles weren't that great. It's like, okay, now I've got a sim going into that world. It's like, you can buy 
the setup for the car. You can buy the car. Like iRacing, you actually have to buy everything. So you can get to a point where like this guy that I follow has got pretty much every car, every track in one of these games that you can just buy. And then he does coaching as well. So it's like this kind of approach just sits perfectly in that realm. It's like you can actually create something around what you love Mm. and make a living out of it, which is mad. It's insane. And I think like even listening to you go through, it's just like there's so much like, it's like already it's unreal. And listening to you speak, I'm just like, you could then do that. You could then do that. You could then mm. do that. Yeah. It's just like, this thing just goes fucking crazy. And I think, um, and I, one of my musings that I posted in our Facebook group the other day that Jace just is like, Ben's doing Ben things again. <laughs> right and shit. Speaks that, in a language that no one understands. Right and shit that no one else has a fucking clue what I mean. Um, <clears throat> but I, I made the comment that uh, NFTs are the ability for small business to go public. Absolutely. So, that you use the term crowdfunding, which I think the project you were talking about, yeah, it was crowdfunding. It was yeah, like, we need some capital to way. open this thing. Yep. I look at your project and I look at the future and I think it's it's floating. It's like, okay, we're releasing shares in this with the money that we make from doing this. This is what we're going to do. And these are our values and what we want to do in the future. It happens, cool. How do you guys want this to work? How do you guys want this to work? And your quote unquote shareholders all have a say in that. And if you don't keep your shareholders happy, then they sell their shares and your value of your product goes down. And I think it's it's such a cool thing. It's it's somewhere between like going public, angel investing, crowdfunding, kind of like bringing in uh, like a shark tank kind of things. Like someone's yeah. coming in with influence and money and all of a sudden it's like, okay, all the things that we've ever wished that we could do, let's talk about that. Yep, for sure. And we started having a conversation this week about like, can we make an AI that can look at someone's lift and give cues, suggestions for accessories and like suggest for movement prep. And alter their program based on their feet. Yeah. Crazy. It's like, okay, well, if we weren't having that discussion six weeks ago because it was like, well, we would never have the money to be able to do that. Yeah. But an NFT raises enough capital to actually make that discussion happen. Definitely. Which is yeah. fucking cool. Which The speed at which things are going to accelerate over the next two, three years because of that. I think it's really cool. Yeah, I think so as well. Um, and I think like the longer I've spent in the space too, it's not just like an NFT where it's a cartoon and it's a community based on the cartoon. It's NFTs are businesses. Mm-hmm. They're tech startups and you're investing in the tech startup. And that's where I think when it comes to investing, a lot of people are getting wrecked because they're just looking for fast money based on based on what the picture looks like or what's coming out tomorrow. Yeah. If you if you take away that and you think, All right, this is a business and this business is going to provide me a service or value and I'm investing in the future, it makes a lot more sense when yeah. you start to think of it that way. Um, and to, to go back to what you're saying about like the flex and stuff like that, we've got Instagram verification, we've got Twitter verification of NFTs coming out soon. Yeah, you're going to be able to huge. click on someone's account, especially, I let's you know, Twitter's got its own sort of sphere, everyone's sort of like into NFTs. Instagram, no one knows what NFTs are. Like they, they just, think it's, you know, bots. What, you know what, yeah. what's, what's crypto? Like I should buy Shiba and Doge. Yeah, like yeah. no one understands it. Like, to, to that greater extent, you're going to be able to click on someone's profile and see the NFT that they, they own and probably what it's worth too. So mm. it's going to become that next level of the blue the blue check. Yeah. Where, um, you know, I think there was a Gary Vee video where someone's like, well, you can't have it physically. So like, how are you supposed to like show the prestige? And it's like, you know, like when someone's got a blue check that there's yeah. a person of authority or of influence or of importance. This is the next layer of that social status. We, we flex the, online all the time. Yeah. Like it's the flex same. everywhere. Yeah, the man. Like yeah. the car, the wallet, the watch, like on the steering wheel. Like yeah. people do it all the time. So no one sits there and goes, is that Ben's hand? Yeah. Like, is that real? Yeah. Like, you know, it's saying it's the rented jet thing. Yeah. You know, no one looks at the rented jet and goes, is that jet rented? Like if 50s in front of a jet, I'm like, that's his jet. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the biggest flex ever. Yeah. Like, you know, we still do it now. Yeah. So it's like, this is just taking that flex culture to the next level. Like being able to look at somebody and just be like, okay, fuck, they're legit. Yeah, I think what the cool part is, it's almost gone full circle. Like we're in a business course at the moment. It's like you need to get featured in publications and stuff so you can say, like we're writing a book at the moment and the intent of that book is to be a bestseller. So then I can say I'm a bestselling author and you'll go, oh shit. (laughs) It's like, then there's, we're learning like, okay, you can go get business awards and you'll probably win because it's only, you're the only person that entered the thing and did it properly. So it's (laughs) like, okay, like uh, you win the Telstra business awards and you were one of five businesses that uh, that entered. But if I walk into a room and say, yeah, I'm from STC Fit. Being the under 80 kilos champion with one. One lifter. One lifter. Yeah. 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 Yep. 
So it's like, it's, yeah, it's, it's looking at that and going, well, we've been trying to do that for ages, but this is like tangible. Yep. And I think the cool part is moving away from the jet to the, I'm part of this group. And there, there will yeah, be, there definitely. will be people that are like, I've got the most expensive one. Mm-hmm. No. But whereas yeah. like, it's instead, I, there'll be a lot of people that will be, I'm a part of this group. For yeah. sure. Yeah. That's for uh, for me and for us where we see everything going. It's like, that's where the real value is. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. For majority of the people. Yeah. Yeah. Iron Dogs is super exciting. It's, it's cool, man. Um, and I think the most exciting thing for me is that like the possibility of it all unfolding is super it's like it's it's a, a not a likely thing but it's possible that it happens it's it's not just oh i'm just gonna like throw shit at the wall and see if it sticks i think that i've managed to build the foundation of something cool and now i'm starting to you know network and within the space and have people that are willing to help like nurture what i'm trying to create i think that it's mm. it's just yeah it's super exciting and the fact that like I don't know if you guys have thought about it, but like this is the first conversation most likely in the world where people have podcasted about the, f- the future of fitness in the metaverse. It's like, this is how early all of this mm. stuff is. Um, yeah. And I guess, me. yeah. And I think if like if someone's listening to this and they don't like understand the concept or they're not sure, I think just get out there and just read or like jump on Twitter or, you know, jump on YouTube and just like get your head around it. Like this is a great like place to start this podcast. Mm. Um, but it shouldn't be the be all end all of like you jumping in. You shouldn't be like, oh, I'm ready to like just spend thousands of dollars on shit I don't understand. Yeah, don't but, just um, in. No, absolutely not. <laughs> um, but it's a, yeah, it's a, we're so early, man. Yeah. It's yeah. just ridiculous. So another resource I'll throw out there is uh, NFT non fungible tokens guide. Uh, I can't even see who it's by. If you just search that, it'll come up. It's on Audible as well. It's actually really short. It's only maybe two, two and a half hours. And it just breaks down a lot of the terms that are used in the NFT space, what they are. Not too much about like where they think they're heading, but it, it's a nice little like, I would send this to my friend who had no idea. Yeah, I'd be like, yeah. go and follow, uh, is it Big Dot Reckon? Uh, I don't know. The Big Reckon dot NFT? Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. I'm I don't, sure. I don't know. <laughs> so, re- sure. Reckon spelt R-K-N. Yeah. So search that. Uh, go there. Follow Adam and then the links there of, to the Discord and all that kind of stuff. Read this book and I think that would give you enough of an insight as to what's going on. If you want to go all in, spend the eight and a half hours listening to the other book. Uh, but Adam's got great resources as well in the Discord of like where to go, just like get an idea of what the fuck's going on. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I created the Discord essentially just to get people out of the DMs, just to create a community of people that wanted to learn I um, wanted to figure it out without just like completely chasing the greed. And I mean, we've seen it, that people have come in, like I've done the giveaways, they've come in for the free NFT and then they've disappeared because they're like, oh, there's no more money in this anymore. Mm. The people that have stayed connected and bounced ideas off, because I think a lot of people just don't have that. They yeah. don't they don't know where to start and they don't know how to troubleshoot the, the problems that they've got. Mm. So the idea of the group was just to have everyone come together and be like, oh, what do you think of this project? What do you think of that project? Um, these guys are doing this. Do you like that? Do you not? What's coming up tomorrow? What can I look at? Mm. Um, and we've just managed to bring like, I've almost onboarded like indirectly a hundred people into NFTs in the mm. last four months. Yeah. Like that's crazy. Um, and as well as that, like as much as I say that I wanted to get people out of the DMs, initially I was like, do I want to create this group? Do I want to keep the knowledge to myself? Because I've put time into it. Other people should put time into it too. And then I thought there's no reason to gatekeep this shit. Because the more people that get involved, the more money into the ecosystem, the more money into the overall yeah, NFT the market goes cap, up. everything goes up. Yep. So I think like if you know what you're doing on like a small scale, the best thing that you can do is try and educate someone in the right direction and then it's just a snowball effect from there. I think it, I think like one of the benefits, like obviously I got exposed through you mm. for the NFT stuff and was kind of dabbling with crypto with Ben and Michael. <clears throat> but it like even just kills like the the FUD, like the fear, uncertainty and doubt that you get when you instantly like go in on something and you're just like, fuck. Or like, you know, all the lads are into the penguins and stuff. And it's like, you know, when things drop and stuff, like there's people that are like, oh, fuck, you know, it's, they're going down. What do you do? Yeah. And then we're just like, nah, man, it's cool. Like this, remember all of this is happening. Like yeah. there's other people that have probably looking at things in a different perspective. And then that person's just like, oh yeah, okay, cool. Like it yeah. kind of kills that fear that you get um and then you know like if you get wrecked on something and like other people have too they're just like nah fuck this is just part of it man like it's not just like everything goes to the moon which is what think people think you do it's like it's like seeing pbs in the gym all the time Mm. it's like you only post the pbs 
yeah. who posts the fail the fails yeah. you know like not many so you're not posting when you get wrecked you're only posting when you've done a fucking 10 times yeah you know and that's where people think so having that community is good for that it's like no, no, this is actually, it's the Wild West and this is how we actually operate in it. Yeah. You, know, you get wrecked. <laughs> yeah. And I, then you I think do that's all a, right as well. That's a really important point. Is it's, <clears throat> it's awesome that we're early, but it comes with a trade-off and it, it is a bit Wild West still. Oh, I get. You need to have a little bit of an idea of what's going being, on. Being decentralized too, like for people who need to understand that, it's yeah. like if you get wrecked, it's like there's Nothing no one there to do. save you. <laughs> yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, no, um, there's no crypto police or no, NFT police. Yeah, there's, there's, there's no self, governing body, yeah. Self-regulating all the way. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and I, I think with that, like you just you can't overextend your hand too. Like there was one of the boys in the um in the chat, and he was like, "Oh, like what do you think of D Gods? Like is D Gods dead?" And I'm like, "What do you mean?" And he's like, "Well, you know the price is going down." And I sort of broke it down to him. Well, you know you entered on this date at this price. Um, the cost of Solana at this at this time was this. The current price is this. Um, you're actually like triple your investment based on the Aussie dollar. Um, the, the amount of people that are in this project has only grown. The amount of exposure this project has has only grown. The amount of features this project has had has only grown. It actually just hit number seven on the overall market cap rankings. Yeah. Um, that's the opposite of death, man. Yeah. So it's, it's just <laughs> looking at it through a different ex- lens. Exactly. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, he was like, oh, you know, I, I went and I bought, you know, four for like 10 sol. And it's like, well, it's an example of you jumping in too hard and chasing the rainbow. Yeah. Hmm. You know, you can't do that. And the only thing that you can do from this is one, don't just buy shit because everyone else is buying shit. Two, do your own research. And three, don't overextend if you can't afford to take that risk because it's volatile. That's the beauty of it. It's like in, in the share market, in the stock market, like 5% loss is like a crazy day. Yeah. Um, whereas it's in a, this 5%, five is nothing. <laughs> yeah, it it's nothing. It's nothing. Like minutes, you, yeah. you can make, you can make like life changing money in the space of two hours if you manage to catch that, mm. that wave. But, um, yeah, it's it's highly volatile, it's highly risky, but mm. it's just part of the game. And yep. the the worst thing that you can do is just overextend to things that you don't understand. I think to mm. some some point, some we call it like degenerate sort of movements and aping. Some of that is healthy in quotation marks, um, because it's part of the game. Mm. Sometimes crypto and NFTs don't make sense. Yeah, it, like you, you know, Elon I Elon agree. Musk can post about Doge, and then all of a sudden Doge goes up, and then. Everyone sees that, so they're buying that. It's literally just like a meme shitcoin. Yeah. Um, but there's only so much of that that a portfolio can handle. And yeah. if that's your strategy, then you're going to lose money. Um, and just staying present in the space as well is really important. You don't have to be 100% locked on like, like I am, but just 10 minutes a day, check the discords, check the announcements, check Twitter, check the health of the market. Otherwise, you're just going to be carrying these JPEGs to zero. And I have seen that from some of the people within the discord that have tuned out for a space of two weeks. Their investments are now down 80%, 90% because they bought in at a time when there was oversaturation and then they've done nothing in terms of risk management to you know cut their losses and stuff like that. So being present yeah. is important. Too. It's definitely a mistake I made. I think I got in, bought a heap of stuff, checked out, came back. I was like, okay, this is good. Sold, sold everything and then just disappeared for a month and came back. was like, what the fuck's going on? I just, I, I'm totally out because I was waiting to have like two, three hours to sit down and just like really think it out and look at everything. But that approach that, you, that, that you've just mentioned is like the first thing I do is like get up, check all the discords of what I own, check the your, your discord and then like, okay, cool. That all still sounds like ticking over. Go in like what's going on in the marketplace for at least the stuff I own. Sweet, boot out. I check Twitter two, three times a day. Which is pretty much because I I joined I got a D God during D God week yeah so it's like all of my followers are D Gods yeah. um so it's like okay I get to know what's going on with that and then like that, that's it that's what we really need to do to kind of keep an ear on it I think yeah it, just to, just to to maintain your your knowledge and awareness of the space because like two weeks in the NFT space is literally like six months yeah it moves like, so fast especially because it's evolving too there's always something like we had the um the initial growth and then we had the revenue saga where the meerkats you know went to the moon and then everyone else tried to bring revenues in and then you know ftx came in and the first centralized nft exchange said we're not listening things that have royalty share mm-hmm. so then the royalties plummeted and then you know we've had at the moment the um the token era where yeah. every mm-hmm. every project has a, a token and that becomes an issue because that could become a potential security for the sec down the road and stuff like that mm-hmm. so there's so much to keep an keep an eye on, and you can't just be like, "Oh, this sounds good. I'll I'll buy this JPEG, and then I'll come back and check in six months." Yeah, it, it might take off, but if it doesn't, then you're literally holding this to zero. And especially if that's cost you thousands of dollars, that's a waste of money. Yeah, yeah. that's why I like um the like 
the Solana network too. It's like, if you look at the statistics and stuff, like what the average transaction is like $114 US, yeah. something like that. So it's like, it's not a bad place, place for people listening now if they did want to get in yeah. to play in that space. Like when you look at like OpenSea and Ethereum, it's like, man, I played on there for a little bit and I was just like, nah, I'm fucking, yeah. I've got like one, yeah. one NFT now in that space. And I'm like, this is just either people who have a ridiculous amount of money that are willing to let that go or just people who are just trying to play in a place that they shouldn't. Yeah. It's, it's not a playground for the entry-level person. And I think that's what some projects that are trying to bring in new people into the space that are building on Ethereum are going to struggle to yeah. get traction because if you've never bought an NFT before, you don't want to spend $300 on an NFT and then spend $200 on the transaction. Yeah. It's mm. $500. Like that's a massive yeah. amount of that's someone's huge. weekly wage. Yeah, and it, the project's got to go up 80% before you make any money. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah agreed. Yeah. 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 I, I think I know personally I was I was pretty lucky. I got in on a project that took off or they, they airdropped it didn't do well, they airdropped a second one and then it just fucking exploded. And I was like, Okay, well now I've got some money to play with. Um but it is like if you coming in with these like good projects, like Jace was saying earlier, you get in the Discord and like, Okay, what's going on? Well I still message Jace I'm like, just tell me it's okay to buy this. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> That's risky, bro. <laughs> I've got wrecked a few times. Just like, I want to buy this. Just tell me it's okay. So someone said yes. It's like, I'm just like, if I have one, get one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'd ride this wave together. All right. So I think to finish off, um, and I'll need help because you guys are better at it than me. Weird fucking slogans that these people are going to see when they land in, in the discords and shit. So we've already mentioned uh, Sir. So Sir is spelt with a knee. Yeah. It yeah. was like, in the crypto knee. world. Sir. Um, LFG, let's fucking go. Yeah. yeah. Wag me. We're all going to make it. Um, McDonald's for when the market is going to red and we all have to quit our jobs and work at Macca's. <laughs> yeah. uh, what else? The, uh, C- the CEO of Solana NFTs, when there's a problem, you contact him so he can bring the price back up. Just <laughs> It's just... Whales. This, whales. Yeah, the whales. Come and cl- buy all the yeah, cheap ones. Yeah, people have lots of money. The paper just, hands. Paper hands is a big one. Someone that can't hold on to something yeah. that would rather like exit at a 50% loss than hold for 15 minutes. Yeah. The paper hand, diamond hands, You know, someone that's holding for, for the long haul. Yeah. yeah. Um yeah, there's a there's a variety of so a lot of yeah. it people listening to this is like this is the most fucking stupid thing and <laughs> to be honest, like it, it, it is, is, but that's awesome. part of the fun as well. Yeah. It's it's yeah. this whole this whole um subculture or culture, whatever, is built on internet money and nerds getting rich. Yeah. And part of that that culture is like memes and shit posting and yeah. just ridiculous stuff. Yeah. Um like Oh, GM is another one. Good morning. Good morning. So, um, GM, GM. Yeah. Look, this morning, me, me and Chelsea, my girlfriend, were like GM, GM. Like, yeah. that's, you know, it's, it's just what it is. Yeah. And GM is any time of the day as well. It doesn't have yeah. to be in the morning. Yeah. It's just okay. whenever. Yeah. Um, and there was someone on Twitter, I think a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, he said GM is the like the worst part of the most stupid part of this whole crypto sphere. And someone replied like, "I'll kill you." And it was obviously like a joke. Um, yeah. And he ended up getting banned, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, suspended from Twitter. I think he was like um, the vice president of Solana or something oh, like that. Yeah, <laughs> but it's just like that's the sort of like humor around the space and the fact that you can get like meme coins that mean nothing that can yeah. make you life changing money. Yeah, like I. I completely checked out of Spot Wallet for a long time and you know Shiba just exploded and I don't have an explanation for that because I wasn't paying attention but everyone was seemed to tell me they were making money off Shiba. Makes sense. Um, yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't do anything. <laughs> no, it's, it's, part, it's part of the um, enjoyment of the space too yeah. is that it's stupid and it goes against the, um, the status quo of you need to work a nine to five job that you fucking hate to make it in this yeah. world. Yeah. You don't need to do that if you yeah. know what you're doing. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting to see like we've obviously been through an age where it was either hip hop culture or reality TV was where we got everything. And I'd just love to eventually just be like NFT cultures, like people walking down the street just like, wag me, man, wag me. (laughs) It's like, is is that the next step or is it just where just like this subculture of weirdo nerds that talk like that? We'll see. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Maybe we can come back. I was thinking... um, when you said before, like this is probably the first fitness NFT hybrid podcast that's that's kind of happened. I was thinking about um, a gentleman who told us that he was pod- podcasting before it was cool, about six months before we oh, started yeah. as well. I was, yeah, was well. real proud of it. So this will be our thing in, in five years. We'll be able to look back and go like, told you so. This will we be we pioneered the fitness NFT space. Yeah, before it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. Awesome. All right, man. Thanks so much for coming on. Um, before we bounce... Everywhere that we need to go to find you and Iron Dogs, how do we get involved? Where's a or a one-stop hit? 
to, um, to find everything. Yeah, sweet. So I think in terms of the NFT, Instagram is probably the best bet to catch me um, at the big NFT. Um, irondogs.sol on Instagram as well. In terms of Twitter, we've got irondogsbc and at the big reckon, uh, RKN for reckon. So that's my personal uh, Twitter on in the NFT space and the project Twitter as well. We've got the big reckon Discord, which there should be a link on the big reckon Instagram. And the Iron Dogs Discord, there should be a link on the Iron Dogs Instagram and Twitter as well. If you land yeah. in one of those spaces, you'll, Somewhere. you'll find, yeah. find him. Yeah. Yeah. Trust look, me. I'll, look, alternatively, um, you can contact me at AXMLS on twi- on Instagram. Sorry. Um, let me know that you've listened to this episode and you want to be pointing in the right direction. I'm happy to share links. Don't ask me what an NFT is. I'm not answering that. <laughs> I'm not answering any everybody, of the basic questions. Everybody asks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, I'm happy to like guide you in the right direction to yeah. find X Y Z resource because I think that's really important. Yeah, awesome. I don't think this will be the last conversation we have, whether it's on the mic or not, about this. Yeah, um, I think it'll be really cool once once Iron Dogs launches and once it's kicking mm-hmm. off, we'll, we'll come back and touch base again. Awesome, cool. All right, yep. thanks, listeners. Thanks, we'll guys. See you again see you next, next time. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.